Hello and welcome to section 2, error handling, where we're going to write crash resistant code. In this video we're going to talk about representing errors. Okay, so I'm sure in your own projects you have seen um, various ways to propagate errors and show errors. We're going to go through the standard way of doing that and then a few variations that you might not have heard of. So first of all, the normal way is probably using an enum that conforms to the error protocol. We can give this a couple of cases that represent the error we're trying to, trying to show to the user or pass to the code more likely. So in my case, we have a minor error, bad error, and a terrible error. So these are probably not very good names for a real life situation. You probably have errors that represent a specific thing that's gone wrong with your your function or class. But if we were to send this error, I suppose is the word I'm looking for, we have a function maybe that's parsing file, takes in a source of type string. We denote throws to say that it's going to propagate an error. And then we call the keyword my error. We can also use the variable inside the enum. So to provide a little bit more information. So you can we put in some information in there saying, you know, what has gone on here in this part of code that's gone wrong. So that's kind of the standard way of doing things. You've probably seen that a few times before. But the error protocol is actually totally open to whatever use case you want. And a nice example of that is using a struct. So we've just utilized the error protocol again. And we're going to enclose that old my error genome inside it. And then provide a few more properties that we will use um, when sending the error. So in this case, we are still thinking about parsing a file. Now we want to show an error that contains the line that was had the failure. Maybe we, we couldn't recognize the characters in this file. And the column, which would be how many characters in it is. And the kind then is the kind from earlier and how bad this error is. We probably don't need description anymore. So in this case, we would just be able to like this, substantiate it, and pass in whatever. Obviously, you propagate that through your code. So that's a good way to provide a little bit more context on the error. If you've got a maybe a more complicated um, class or function, that's a great way to encapsulate the error data and send it back to whatever is going to help represent it for the user or help, you know, prop or help mitigate it in some form. So, so in the case we're using some asynchronous functions, probably don't want to use enums or it's probably more practical to use what I'm going to show you now. Um, the main reason being is you can have a couple of cases. You can have a success case or a failure case, and you're not going to know until it's all finished. So the way we represent that anyway is using another enum, and result is the common name for it. We use a bit of generic types here to represent a value and an error, and each of our cases are going to be success and failure and they will return type that we defined for value and error. Okay, so now I've got this type result that we can use to pass back from our asynchronous calls and we can then switch upon it to see which which was which. Um, so I have a function here. I'll show you how that works. 
So we have a network request or a fetch that takes in a URL request and has a completion block. This block returns us our result from above and we've defined it to be a URL response and the data. So this never keyword you can see here uh, represents a function that is never going to return basically. And it's kind of nice for a case like this or a case where in our, well in our case, we will never have a failure. So that can be used kind of nice if you don't actually want to do anything for it. It makes it clear to the other users, the other developers that it's not happening. So how do we use this function? We set up a request. It's just a placeholder URL and we call it with our fetch function. The result comes back and it has the type tuple of response and data and never. So we switch on that and we've just got the success case. And we're able to pull out the response and print it out. The data will be there also if we want to use that. If we remove never, then we'd have the second case. And then we can work from there going on. That's the pretty common pattern for using asynchronous calls. And this is what you'll see throughout code if you ever get to see it. There's a few good open source libraries out there you'll find if you look up networking that all utilize the same pattern. And I encourage you to go through it and look at yourself and understand it. Okay, that's been our video on representing errors.